All right, for this video, we want to go over a sample form IT-201, which is a New York resident tax return. So this is going to be a 2022 tax return for our taxpayer here, Adam Taxpayer. So we've got the IT-201. We've also got Adam's Form 1040 filed with the IRS. Uh, so we'll go through both of these pieces. And then we also have the instructions for the IT-201. Uh, which we will need to look up the tax tables uh, for the 2022 tax year. So these two pieces and then I do have one slide here covering some background on the IT-201 and then the fact pattern that we're going to be looking at here. So let's go through the fact pattern first, talk about some of the New York uh, state tax differences and then we'll look at the 1040 and the IT-201. So in our fact pattern here, we've got Adam Q. Taxpayer. He's a single filing taxpayer and he lives in Albany. He works full time as a consultant and his W-2 income is 84,000 for the 2022 year. And his W-2 shows that he has federal income taxes withheld of 8,400 and New York state taxes withheld of 5,000. Now, as far as investment income, he's got a few investments here. He has a, a U.S. bank account, a savings account that pays interest income of $100, and he has a stock brokerage account that paid qualified dividend income of $250 during the year on his stock investments, and then he had some short-term capital losses of $766 and some long-term capital gains of $700. Now, he's also invested in some Florida municipal bonds. So these are state-issued bonds, and it paid him interest income of $47 during the year. And then he also had some U.S. Treasury investments, which paid interest income of $75 during the year. Now, as far as insurance coverage and where he lives, he is covered by a high-deductible plan at work. And so he was eligible to have a health savings account, so he has an HSA that he put $1,000 into. Now he rents an apartment in Albany, so he's not gonna have a lot of itemized deductions, right? He doesn't have mortgage interest, property taxes, he's just got uh, his rent, and so he's gonna be claiming the standard deduction for both federal and state tax purposes. Now some quick notes on the IT-201. Uh, talk about some differences and, and common issues uh, with federal returns. So the HSA deduction. So New York does follow the federal tax treatment. So if you make a contributions to your HSA, which Adam did here, uh, you can still get that deduction at the state level. And that's unique because some states don't allow that, right? You have to have an, a, an add back for the HSA contributions. Now municipal bond interest is exempt from federal income taxes but it can be taxable in your state of residence. And so New York is not gonna tax municipal bond interests from New York state or city obligations, but if you have investments in other states, it may tax that income. And so what we're gonna see is Adam is gonna to have to pay New York taxes on that Florida municipal bond interest. Now, as far as capital gains and uh, long-term capital gains and qualified dividends, New York, all of it is just treated as ordinary income. So they don't have a qualified uh, dividend and capital gain worksheet where you pay reduced rates like you would at the federal level. Everything is just lumped into ordinary income. And so we'll see that on the IT-201 as well. Now, as far as other federal to state adjustments, uh, New York's got a number of them, like most states. These are generally reflected on page two of the IT-201, additions and subtractions but they do have decoupling modifications as well. So there's a separate form, IT558, where there's additional adjustments that could be made going from your federal income to your state adjusted income. All right, so let's have a look at the federal return first, go through some key points, and then we can look at the IT201. So this is Adam's 1040. Now, it's important to do the 1040 first because New York, like a lot of other states, look at your federal income as kind of a starting point and then you make adjustments to get to your state taxable income. So we've got Adam Q. Taxpayer here. There we have his uh, total wages per his W-2. We have his total interest income, uh, taxable interest income of $175. 
uh, total ordinary dividends of 250, all of which is qualified. And there's his tax exempt municipal bond interest. So if we look at Schedule B, we can see more detail here. We have the $100 in regular interest from his savings account. We have the $75 in U.S. Treasury bond interest. And then we have the ordinary dividend income down there of 250. And then on Schedule D, we have the net amount of losses right he had 766 in short-term capital losses $700 in long-term capital gains and then the HSA contribution reported on line 10 right adjustments to income so if we go down to uh, schedule 2 here we can see he has that HSA deduction form 8889 is included which is a $1,000 reduction uh, in arriving at his adjusted gross income so Adam's adjusted gross income for federal purposes is $83,359. He's got a standard deduction, and there's his taxable income. All right, so that's kind of the baseline for you know what we had to work with when we get to the state return. Now what does the state return look like? So we've got the IT-201 here. Uh, at the top here, we've got the taxpayer's name. So first, middle, initial, and last. Input your date of birth, right? So Adam's date of birth, Jan 1, 1980. Uh, then mailing address state county of residence and then the school district in the it201 instructions you can look up the school district code number depending on where you live so filing status here he's the same single filing taxpayer same as federal and he is not itemizing his deductions and he's not being claimed as a dependent on another return uh, d1 do you have any foreign bank accounts so this is a question that's asked on Schedule B of your 1040. So if you look at Schedule B, you have the foreign account questions down here in Part 3. Uh, in Adam's case here, you know, on the IT-201, they do ask the question directly again. Uh, so no, he doesn't have any foreign accounts. And he is not uh, a Yonkers resident or a New York City resident at all during the year. And so uh, that's why he does not maintain living quarters in New York City and he's not been in the in the city at all. No dependents. So, Page two is where we start getting into more of the numbers here. So the federal income and adjustments, we can see here these these match exactly with what he has on his 1040, right? We got his wages, uh, taxable interest income, ordinary dividends, the $1,000 adjustment for his HSA contribution, and there's his recomputed federal AGI, which is the same as his uh, AGI per page one of the 1040. Now. The line 19A worksheet recomputed federal AGI. This might be different from your 1040 if you have any of those decoupling modifications. So that's the IT 55A form. In our case here, he doesn't have any. So this is where we see the real adjustments in order to arrive at the New York adjusted gross income. So in New York additions, we have interest income on state and local bonds and obligations, but not including those of New York State or its local government. So the $47 here is the Florida municipal bond interest. So at the federal income level, he's not required to include that in income and pay taxes on it because it's municipal bond interest. Because it's Florida interest, he has to add it back to get to adjusted New York uh, gross income. So we've got an addition for $47 there, and then a New York subtraction for interest income on US government mods. So those are the treasuries. So the states cannot tax the uh, treasury interest that is taxable at the federal level, but not the state level. So he's got a subtraction there, but we have an addition for the Florida municipal bond interest because it's Florida muni interest and not New York. So when Adam computes his New York AGI, he's got $83,331. The standard deduction for single filing taxpayers in 2022 is 8,000. So his New York taxable income is $75,331. So now page three, we have to compute the tax. So if we look at the IT 201 instructions here, uh, if we jump down to the tax tables page, so the starting point is up here. Try to figure out what kind of rate schedule or table we use. So if New York State AGI is under 107,650 and New York State taxable income is 65K or more, right? This is the range we're in. We use the New York State tax rate schedule. So the New York State tax rate schedule right below here for us, 
we're going to the correct filing status, which is single, all right, and married filing separately. So Adam's uh, New York taxable income here is 75,331. And also just as a reminder, notice here that even though he has qualified dividend income, uh, th there isn't any rate differential, right? All of the income is being taxed at the same rate. So he's at $75,331. So if we look at the table here, he's within this range here, right? 75331 So in order to calculate the tax, what we need to do is look at, okay, so the tax is going to be $600 plus 5.85% of the excess over thirteen nine. So if we take our 75,331 minus 13,900, and then we're gonna multiply that by 5.85%, we get 3,593.7 plus the $600. So our total taxes for New York are gonna be 4,194, right? We're rounding up. So 4,194 is the New York State tax. So our total New York State taxes here is going to be $41.94. We're not a New York City or Yonkers resident, right? Um, nor do we have any income source to the city. So that's why these lines are all left blank for Adam. If you do live in New York City, for example, then you're going to have to compute your New York City taxable income and pay New York City tax as well. So the total taxes that Adam is going to owe is $4,194. But remember, on his W-2, it showed that he had New York State taxes withheld of 5,000. So he gets credit for the 5,000 that was already taken out of his paycheck. So we've got the $5,000 there. So the net amount that he overpaid was $806. So you have a couple options here, right? You can have a, a refund check sent to you via paper or direct deposit. Or if Adam wanted, he could have this applied to his taxes next year. Right, so that would be report on line 79, right? Amount of uh, line 77 that you want to apply to your 2023 taxes. So you could do that if you'd like. Uh, other options, right? New York State 529. So those are the college savings accounts plans, right? You could do something like that. But in this case, Adam just wants to get a refund. So he's going to ask for a full refund of the $806 and he's going to get it via paper check. So we left the uh, direct deposit information out at the bottom. Uh, taxpayer block must be completed down here. So occupation, date, add your phone number, email, and then your occupation if you have one. Now the last thing that should be included is a summary of your W-2. So the IT-2 form, uh, basically you fill this out with the information matching your W-2. So the W-2 you get from your employer, uh, input all that information on your wages, taxes withheld, state tax withheld, and, and all that other pertinent information. All right, so that covers it for this tutorial. I hope that was helpful. Uh, again, a very simple example, but uh, hopefully it was uh, clear on some of these uh, federal to state adjustments, particularly around the investment income. So hope that was helpful. Uh, thank you for watching. And of course, uh, always look forward to seeing you again on the next video. Thank you.